Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we are going to learn about the physiology of cranial nerves. Cranial nerves are the nerves which arise from brain, while the spinal nerves are the nerves which arise from the spinal cord. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves. In today's lecture, we are going to learn about the cranial nerves, the nerves which arise from brain. In this slide, we can see that two nerves arise from the pore brain. Two cranial nerves arise from the midbrain, two cranial nerves from the pons, and six cranial nerves arise from the medulla oblongata. Now going to discuss all the cranial nerves. In this slide, we can see the three cranial nerves. The two cranial nerves arise from the brain, from the pore brain, you can see, and the third one arises from the midbrain. The nerve one is the olfactory nerve which is responsible for the transfer of uh, olfactory information from the nose to the olfactory cortex. Actually, the receptor of the nerve 1 is present inside the nose or the epithelium of the nose. So, from the nose, the sensory information of the smell uh, is transferred toward the nerve 1 and this nerve 1 uh, is uh, over here in the form of bulb and this nerve 1 transfers the information to the olfactory cortex which is present in the temporal lobe of the cerebral cortex. So the nerve 1 is olfactory nerve and olfactory nerve is responsible for the detection of smell or to transfer the information of smell to the olfactory cortex and this is what this is sensory nerve. The nerve 2. The nerve 2 is the optic nerve which is represented by red line over here and the nerve 2 is responsible to transfer the visual information from the photoreceptors of the eye to the visual cortex of the occipital lobe of the cerebral cortex. So this is the optic nerve and this optic nerve is responsible for the transfer of visual information or this is responsible for vision and this is also what this is also sensory nerve now coming toward the next slide this is the nerve 3 this is called oculomotor nerve this is actually a motor nerve and this arises from the midbrain this is motor as well as parasympathetic nerve I'm going to show you that uh, this provide the motor information to the superior rectus muscle of the eye and the inferior rectus muscle of the eye and it also provide the parasympathetic information to the iris and to the ciliary muscles of the eye I'm going to show you in the next slide in this slide you can see that this superior rectus muscle of the eyeball this is innervated by the oculomotor nerve uh, this is the inferior rectus muscle this inferior rectus muscle of the eyeball is also innervated by the oculomotor nerve similarly uh, the iris and the ciliary muscles are also provided by the oculomotor nerve in this slide we can see that this is the iris and this circular portion of the iris represents the circular smooth muscles of the iris which are responsible for the constriction of pupil. So this circular smooth muscles of the iris is provided by the, by the parasympathetic branch of the oculomotor nerve. Similarly, the, this is the ciliary muscle. The ciliary muscle of the uh, eye which is present uh, near the ciliary body of the eye this is also provided by the parasympathetic branch of the oculomotor nerve and this muscle is responsible for the convexity or for the concavity of the lens of the eyeball. I am going to write it. Oculomotor nerve. This is actually motor nerve plus parasympathetic nerve. Now coming towards the next one. In this slide we can see the nerve 4. This is the nerve 4. The nerve 4 is called trochlear nerve. 
this nerve is provided to the oblique muscle of the eyeball the oblique muscle of the eyeball is uh, attached with the trochlea of the eye that is why this nerve is called trochlear nerve so this oblique muscle is responsible for the oblique motion of the eyeball i am going to show you this this is the trochlea this is a cartilaginous structure called trochlea and this oblique muscle is attached with the trochlea and this muscle is provided by the by the trochlear nerve because of the presence of trochlea over here and this oblique muscle is responsible for the oblique movement of the eyeball nerve 4 is the trochlear nerve and this nerve is also a motor nerve now coming towards the next one nerve 5 this is nerve 5 nerve 5 is called trigeminal nerve trigeminal nerve arises from the pon the previous one arises from the midbrain but this one arises from the pon this is having three sensory branches this sensory branch of the trigeminal nerve get uh, the sensory information from the lower eyelid from the proximity of the nose and from uh, some part of the face this get the sensory information from the upper jaw from the teeth and from the upper lip this get the sensory information from the lower jaw from the lower lips and from proximity similarly this is the motor uh, fiber this is the motor branch of the trigeminal nerve and this muscle is provided to the achieving muscles of the or uh, this nerve is provided to achieving muscles of the oral cavity and uh, this nerve is provided to the tensor tympani muscle i am going to show you this is the tensor tympani muscle inside the middle ear which is attached with the malleus uh, of the ossicle this is the malleus and this is attached with the uh, tensor tympani and tensor tympani is provided by the trigeminal motor nerve and this muscle get contracted when there is very loud voice which strike uh, with the the tympanic membrane of the ear so this uh, tensor tympani is provided by the trigeminal nerve trigeminal nerve and this trigeminal nerve is mixed nerve mixed mean sensory and motor now coming towards the next one this slide show another nerve which arises from the pons and this is also a motor nerve this is nerve 6 which is called abducent nerve and this nerve is provided to the lateral rectus muscle of the eye i am going to show you the muscle to which uh, this is this is the lateral rectus muscle of the eyeball which is provided by the by the abducent muscle and this muscle is responsible for the lateral motion of the eyeball i am going to show you this motion this moment of the eyeball this lateral abduction of the eyeball is carried out by the help of this abducent nerve i am going to write it nerve 6 is abducent nerve and this abducent nerve is motor nerve now coming towards the next one this is the nerve 7 nerve 7 is the facial nerve and this facial nerve is also a mixed nerve this nerve is mixed nerve as well as the parasympathetic nerve the facial nerve gives the sensory information from major part of the face and from scalp and temporal area this also gives the sensory information from the anterior part of the tongue that is regarding the taste it gets the taste sensation from the anterior part of the tongue it provides the parasympathetic information to the salivary gland the two types of salivary gland are provided are innervated by the parasympathetic branch of the facial nerve and uh, the salivary gland which are provided by the facial nerve are the sublingual salivary gland and submandibular salivary gland the facial nerve also provide the motor information to major part of the face it also provide the motor information to the temporal area and to the scalp area 
and it also provides uh, the motor information to the stapedius muscle one of the smallest muscle in the body i am going to show you this is the stapedius muscle which is attached with the steps of the ossicle and uh, this stapedius muscle is innervated by the facial nerve i'm going to write it the facial nerve the facial nerve is next nerve plus parasympathetic nerve so the facial nerve was the mixed nerve motor nerve the sensory nerve and the parasympathetic because it provides the parasympathetic sensations to the uh, to the salivary gland now coming toward the next one the nerve 8 or vestibulocochlear nerve this is responsible for listening and for equilibrium it means that the nerve 8 is responsible for the transfer of auditory information to the auditory cortex uh, in the temporal lobe of the cerebral cortex and the equilibrium information to the cerebellum. The equilibrium information is transferred from the vestibular apparatus of the ear. This is the vestibular apparatus. From the vestibular apparatus, the vestibular nerve arises and from the cochlea, the cochlear nerves arise. Both of these combine together and form the vestibular cochlear nerve. This vestibular cochlear nerve cross the, the internal acoustic meatus and goes toward the medulla and through the medulla, it provides the sensory uh, information towards the uh, auditory cortex and toward the cerebellum. So this is a sensory nerve and this is responsible for audition or for uh, auditory sensation and for equilibrium. Nerve 8 is vestibular cochlear nerve and this vestibular cochlear nerve uh, is a sensory nerve. Now coming toward the next one. This is the nerve 9. I am going to magnify it. The nerve 9 is the glossopharyngeal nerve. <coughs> As the name indicates, the, the glosso is for tongue and pharyngeal is for pharynx. So it gets the sensory information from the posterior part of the tongue that is regarding the taste. It gets the taste sensation from the posterior part of the tongue and it gives the motor sensation to, the, uh, to some muscles inside the pharynx. That is why this is called the glossopharyngeal nerve is also responsible for the transfer of sensory information from the chemoreceptor and baroreceptor from the carotid artery. The chemoreceptors and baroreceptors are present on the carotid uh, artery. So from the carotid artery, that get the key, information from the chemoreceptor and from the baroreceptor, uh, that is a far pressure, uh, and that is transferred toward the medulla oblongata. Uh, similarly, as far as the parasympathetic nerve is concerned, the, this is the parasympathetic branch of the nerve 9 or the glossopharyngeal nerve this parasympathetic nerve is responsible for the innervation of parotid salivary gland parotid salivary gland is the largest salivary gland which produce the largest amount of saliva inside the oral cavity i'm going to write it glossopharyngeal nerve and glossopharyngeal nerve is a mixed type of nerve and this is a mixed type of nerve because this glossopharyngeal nerve provide the motor information to some muscles of the pharynx this get the sensory information from the uh, chemoreceptor and baroreceptor this also get the sensory information from the posterior tongue and this provide uh, the parasympathetic information to the parotid salivary gland that is why this is mixed uh, glossopharyngeal nerve plus uh, parasympathetic nerve now coming towards the next one this slide represents the nerve 10. The nerve 10 is called vagus nerve. Vagus nerve is the vast nerve of the body. The major part of the vagus nerve provide the parasympathetic information to the uh, heart, to the GI tract, to the liver and to the lungs. Uh, the parasympathetic uh, innervation play a vital role in the digestion, in the heartbeat, in the respiration. 
so this uh, this is widely distributed through all these system inside the thorax inside the abdomen and the sensory nerve also get uh, the information from the chemoreceptors and the baroreceptor receptor of the aorta the sensory nerve get this information or sense information from the chemoreceptor and baroreceptor of the aorta this is also branch of the vagal nerve similarly the uh, motor nerve provide uh, uh, motor information to the pharynx and larynx which help in solving of food so the nerve 10 is the vagus nerve i'm going to write it the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve is uh, a mixed type of nerve because and the major part of the, uh, the vagus nerve is uh, provided to the parasympathetic nervous system to the thorax and, the, and to the abdomen one very important thing which should be remembered that the nerve 10 also get the taste sensation from the uh, from the taste buds which are present inside the pharynx in the pharynx uh, and some part of the esophagus some the uh, taste, uh, taste receptors are there from which uh, the nerve 10 is responsible for the transfer of information to the uh, gustatory nucleus now coming towards the next one the next one is the accessory nerve in this slide we can see the accessory nerve this is the accessory nerve this nerve is uh, supplied to muscle this is totally motor nerve and this is supplied to two types of nerve uh, i'm going to show you that uh, this uh, nerve arises from the medulla oblongata but one branch of this nerve goes to the spinal cord also to the cervical region of the spinal cord so uh, this is considered as the cranial nerve and this cranial nerve provides the motor information to the two types of muscle the sternocleidomastoid muscle this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle and this is the uh, this is the trapezius muscle the sternocleidomastoid muscle is called sternocleidomastoid muscle because this is this is come connected with the sternum with the clavicle and with the mastoid process that is why this is called sternocleidomastoid muscle i am going to show you somewhere this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle this is connected with the sternum with the clavicle and with the mastoid process not uh, exactly with the mastoid process but near the mastoid process uh, to the temporal bone that is connected that is why this is called sternocleidomastoid muscle and this is innervated by the accessory nerve uh, now coming toward the next one this is the trapezius muscle this is the trapezius muscle which ranges from the uh, that is connected with the temporal bone and it uh, goes towards the thoracic vertebrae so this make a trapeze like structure i'm going to show you what is trapeze trapeze is. this is trapeze this represent the trapeze so this uh, muscle represent the trapeze like structure the trapeze like the swing like structure that is why this is called trapezius muscle and this trapezius muscle is also provided by the accessory nerve or the nerve 11 nerve 11 is accessory nerve and this uh, accessory nerve is motor nerve the last one is the hypoglossal nerve the hypoglossal nerve is also a motor nerve hypo mean below and the glossal mean tongue so this is right from the lower part of the tongue that is why there is a, this is called hypoglossal nerve and this is responsible for talking this is actually provided to the muscles of the of the tongue so this helps in the talking this uh, get the sensory this get the motor information from the brain to the tongue for talking from the broca's area and but this actually this uh, nerve also goes to the medulla oblongata